Welcome to Behind the Last Chair. I'm your host, Alexis Weisenberger, founder and owner of AW Lashes. My goal is to help you as a lash artist grow with tips and tricks on lashing, becoming an entrepreneur, marketing, and so much more. This is an amazing place to find free resources and connect with lash artists all around the world. Let's get started. Welcome everyone to Behind the Last Chair. I'm so excited for today's topic. It is about pre-made fans and, you know, all the controversial things with it and um, all the amazing things about it too. And as well, before we get started, I just wanted to remind everyone that I know what it's like as a lash artist that listens to podcasts um, to have an ad while you're lashing. So we don't run ads on the show. So I just wanted to remind everyone that we only grow the show organically um, by you sharing. And if you like us, please give us a share um, because we don't run ads. So that being said, I wanted to introduce Jay, or as you guys might know her on Instagram, Jay underscore Lashpreneur. How are you, Jay? I'm doing so good. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. I, first of all, love your work. And I was um, shocked, just like the rest of the world, when, you know, you discover it's pre-made fans. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? The lash world evolves so fast. Like, sometimes I can't keep up. I learn something new and before you know it, it's like becoming something old and you got to get on with the new, you know? (laughs) Oh, I, I, I get it. I mean, when I was lashing, lashes come in like... They used to call them pups and yeah. we had to kind of dig them out. I don't know. How long have you been lashing for Jay? I've been lashing for about five years. Um, as soon as I oh. learned my first course, although I wasn't technically officially licensed yet, I started lashing. And then I, once I was licensed, I started publicly announcing the services. But before that, I was practicing with friends or family or anyone I could get my hands on. So it's been about mm-hmm. five years, but no, I've had friends. I have friends that are lash artists and that. And people I've interviewed through my live, um, the live interviews I do on my Instagram with them. Um, And yeah, I've had people that have talked about lashing for like 10 plus years. And they used to have to pick them out out of a little container, like individually (laughs) and like put them together. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the pain that just the thought of that. I'm like, wow, we've definitely evolved a lot from then and it's become a lot easier I'd say in the sense of not having to pick out every individual little lash out right and then having to come up with or or just little flat classics alone well I totally agree because like you said it started there where classic lashes came in like this ball of of hair (laughs) (laughs) and you know and then it came to be on strips and then you got to you know pick it up individually And I feel like that's kind of how volume fans and volume lashing is becoming is, you know, it started where it was handmade and handmade only. And then they had these pre-mades that weren't the best, but that I just kind of want to slide into like how these pre-mades are evolving to something on, you know, just like classic lashes started. Now volume lashes are getting made simpler. Right. Yeah. Um, it, I think it's fascinating to watch happen. And yeah, there's a, there's a range of pre-mates or pro out there. So yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So what made you kind of jump on this loose fan, um, pre-made fan train? Because I see you on Instagram and I personally love that you're just so open about it because I feel like right now it's still, it's still becoming okay. And so I just wanted to get your story of how it became like when you were like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to share this. Um, yeah, no, great, great question. It's been, it's been an internal battle. I'll be honest. Like from the beginning, when I started, I wasn't super open about it because I was taught in school, like you don't do those like those are clusters that's disgusting it's not gonna stick there's these new pre-mates coming out and they're very plastic like 
But then I, the being the person that I am, entrepreneur and like wanting to go out and go out and venture and learn something new, you know? Yeah. I started looking and learning way more into it. And I actually briefly started a um, lash company mm-hmm. and I'm going to be strictly just pre made. And so I had to really study up on pre-maids and the different types and kinds to really be able to get a good quality one. So in that learning, I, um, I was able to really learn and distinguish the difference between a quality, good pre or pro made or loose fan versus something that was just, um, put together very quickly without much thought. Do you know what I mean? And obviously not by an artist, if you will. Yeah. So, um, I started, I think. I started doing it because, um, uh, when I got started, I got started and I started booth wrenching right out of school. And, um, at first that I just did hair cause I got a cosmetology license. So yeah. I, I did hair only. That was my biggest passion. Uh, lashes were something that I feel were like, you just had to have a lot of patience. Let's be honest. <laughs> Lash artists, we need to have yes. a lot of patience. And I am very impatient by nature. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> so um, that was something I wasn't too excited about. But in the beginning, what when I started, like lashes were becoming so hot. Everyone wanted lashes and I needed to pay bills. So yes. I was like, whoever pays the bills, I will jump on that train. You know, like I was doing it, like I said, at home with friends, family. And then I'm like, I'm going to just dive right into that. And, and it started paying more of my bills than hair because hair can go, you can go months without having to touch up your hair, but lashes, we need every two to three weeks, you know? Yes. That's the beauty of it. You can grow a clientele so much quicker. I totally agree. Yep. For sure. So, so I started doing lashes because of that a lot more. And I started going into, I started venturing into the pre-made because as a newbie artist, obviously I'm taking a million years to get something done. (laughs) Yes. And and I was practicing at home. We'd be watching these and I'd be practicing like handmaids and the different, different like a type of techniques. But I noticed just practicing alone. I, 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 would get a lot of pain on my hand. And the thing is I also suffer from lupus and get joint pain. Oh my gosh. So that was rough. And I, yeah, like it was like a moment of, I just went to school, learned all these things. And now I can't do it because I, because physically I am having trouble. And that was, it was hard to, to try to like swallow. And I'm like, no, there's no way. Like, no, (laughs) Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to make this yes. happen. <laughs> yes. And so I I did get on some medication that helped at the moment. I was starting to like have a little bit of a flare up. So that was hard. Um, and so I remember I'm like, you know what? Maybe this pre-made thing has a, has a, um, has somewhere where it could actually take me. And if I look into it, maybe it's not so bad. And when I started doing my research, I noticed everything that I was taught in school was actually false. It was just, it was old belief from what used yeah. to be. Yeah. I totally agree. I mean, I feel like there's so many things out there like that. And, and if we can all just be open-minded and just give it a shot. I mean, even if people want to stay with handmaids, which is totally awesome, Mm -hmm. um, to give loose fans or, you know, like you said, any of the, you know, do your research and find a company you love, um, and find some ones you want to try just to give it a shot. Right. Cause you don't know until you try. Right. Agreed. 100% agreed. And, and when there's such thing as crystallizing, which is a form of pre or pro made, but you're doing it yourself instead of buying it already made by someone else. Right. Yes. And crystallizing is also the same exact thing. You're just essentially speeding up the time you're with the client, because if you add on the time, you're also making the fans. I say that you're kind of losing there because you're adding more time, you know? Yeah. I would say that, you know, it's, I mean, it's not just you that, you know, is suffering with your joints and stuff, because believe me, I, at one point was wearing bowling wrist guards at night. Oh, yeah. So my wrists would stop throbbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But your clients also appreciate, you know, um, the same results and less time. Correct. Yeah. They just <laughs> want you to make them look amazing. They don't really care how, as long as the lashes are good quality and they're not, you don't, they don't have bad retention and they're not hurting or discomfort or et cetera, you know, yeah. this where, where like continued education plays a role. And so if you're doing all the right things, 
honestly, and then you're not going to go and use crappy lashes of any kind. And Mm -hmm. that's going to come through to your clients and they're going to keep coming back. Yeah. And I am so excited for everyone to hear your story because I think so many lash artists are suffering from maybe carpal tunnel or, you know, some like back pain or anything. And I mean, you right there could help them out by, you know, opening up their minds a little bit more to what else is out there. For sure. I'm happy to help with that. Yeah. Cause it's true. <laughs> you know what? Every lash artist, lash artist sooner or later will start getting some sort of carpal tunnel, joint pain, muscle spasm, whatever. Like there is something that's going to happen if you're lashing, especially if you start doing a great job, people are going to keep coming back. They're going to start telling people and that, that clientele will grow quickly before you know it. And guess what? You're going to realize, can I keep up with this? Because suddenly you're in pain, your back is in pain, your hands are in pain, your, you know, everything, even I still have lots of pains, but at least I'm not having to make every individual fan anymore, you know, in the, on the spot. Sometimes I still crystallize for fun, but. (laughs) Oh, totally. So I, about a year ago, got turned on to loose fans, ultra speed fans, ultra slim base. Uh. There's so many names, I guess we can say in general. Um, but I actually was super stubborn. I have to admit that. Um, and it kind of took a humbling experience. So one of the girls at my salon I own, um, she just couldn't get handmaids down and she's older. Um, but to watch her struggle for so long, I mean, and then finally she came to me with loose lashes and I was kind of upset, Jay. Like I was kind of like, wow, you're just going to give up on something that, you know, I worked my butt off to learn. And, you know, I think that's a bad thing for me to be so stubborn, but I'd like to admit that on the table of, I mean, I was... I was just as bad as, you know, as someone else with those nasty comments right. of what it's like to see those and your, you know, your face is turning red and you're like, how dare you take my <laughs> art away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you know what? And it's, I think it's awesome that you're saying that because there's a lot that started in that mentality. I was, I myself was one of them because of what I was taught in school. So for a while yeah. there, before I was really open to it, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm going to be one of those last artists that people like are always talking crap about because, you know, and so that's why for a minute there, I hit it. I hit it. until I expanded my knowledge and realized, holy crap, like that is not true. And eventually it honestly hasn't been until this past year that I've been opened up about it to to, like publicly because my clients, I've always been very transparent when I'm going to do it. If I, if I did it once, once I transferred them over, I let them know. Right. And they were all very like, Clients, honestly, I think people freak out and think clients are like, ew, because most of the time, if they do the research, they'll know the old stuff. Yeah. Clients, honestly, are more like, whatever, I trust you. You've been doing a great job so far. I can't see why you would suddenly turn it to something bad and they'll do it. They'll get it. And then half the time, honestly, retention will improve or they'll like the, the way it looks better or whatever. I don't know. Like something will change or they'll say, Oh, I haven't even noticed the difference and they'll love it and continue to come. And even when you bring your prices up, they're returning. You know what I mean? And oh, so I love that. I think it's awesome that you're, you're, you know, telling your story too, and talking about how you had a hard time in the beginning, because you know what? Everyone pretty much does. I, I, I yet to find someone that doesn't or that openly admits that they do like pre-maids and goes, yeah, I've been very loud and proud from the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) And I think, um, lash artists, especially, you know, the newbies out there, they need to hear this because I'm sure they were like, um, the girl at my salon struggling. Mm -hmm. And so I just remember watching her put them on. And then, you know, in my mind, (laughs) I'm admitting to this, I'd be like, well, those look the exact same because <laughs> <laughs> I crystallize and those look like my crystallized fans yeah. and I make piles of lashes, how they come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And the art of it is still there. And, you know, our stubborn selves are like, oh, it's taking away the art. But I mean, you can speak from this from, you know, your end too, I'm sure with 
all the variety of what these fans come in. And I'm still amazed yeah. of the thicknesses, the curls you can still get, the colors. I mm. mean, what am I missing? There's so much artistry of it. Exactly. There really is. And I feel like every, like, every few months I find something new that's coming out that you're like, Oh wait, what? Like I just discovered gem lashes and I'm obsessed. Like they're just, they're just single gem lashes. Right. I don't know if you've seen them. Have you seen them at all? Yeah. I mean, I've seen a few, but now you're, you're making me want to like, after this, I'm going to go look up these gem lashes. They're so cute. It's honestly just like a, just like the same idea as a pop of color, except Uh you've got a pop of like a gem on each side. And they're so cute. And the first time I tried it, I tried it on my sister, who is technically my lash guinea pig for anything. <laughs> Anytime I want to try something new and I don't have a model, I'm like, I'm going to try this on you. She's like, okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I showed them to her and I said, I'm like, what do you think? And at first she was like, that looks like a bit much. <laughs> like, <laughs> And then I put one on each side. And then when I was done with her fill, she looked and she was obsessed. She's like, now I, she's like, I feel like I need more. I'm like, what? At first it's like, like too much. Now more. <laughs> <They're super laughs> That's how we all cute. start. <laughs> we start with classic and we slowly upgrade. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it's, it's an evolving, it's an evolving thing. Lashes are, it's, it's always going to be, so there's always something new and yeah, pre major are always going to be evolving, I think. Yeah. And I think it's so cool. So I, I watched, um, her put on this and I was stubborn and anyways, going back to it, I just, I was just stubborn and, but then, you know, someone would come in, Oh, I want it soft. And she would whip out the 3d fans. Oh, I want it full. She's whipping out 14 D fans. And, you know, even to this day, like those 14 D fans don't look as good as my 14, or they look better than my 14 D uh, fans <laughs> because they're all like perfectly symmetrical yeah. and that's so hard to do. I mean, there's <laughs> beauty in both for sure. Like I would never say one is better than the other, but like for sure, like overall you look at both and there's times where you, you can't tell the difference at all. Like there really yeah. is no difference. You can like, I don't know that I could pick out, like I've seen a few, um, very few people that I've seen that do handmaids and they'll like do just Russian volume and that I feel like may be a little different because the difference is that you get to see pre-maids and say seven millimeter or six you know those yeah. that's when you can tell okay that was definitely handmade because you know pre-maids are not made in that size <laughs> yeah exactly so um when I watched her do all these things I was still stubborn but at the point of well, I want her to be successful in her, her chair. So I'm just going to step away and let her do her thing. And yeah. I'm not going to say anything. So I, I let her step away or I let me, I stepped away and, um, and then I started seeing a few other girls trying it at the salon. And I'm like, what, why are you trying that? Like you make handmaids and then let's go back to your, um, first issue, Jay, like they're, you know, the wrists were hurting, their back were hurting. They're like, Oh, I just do this at the end for 15 minutes just to speed yeah. it up. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. And I was like, Whoa. Oh, okay. Well that's cool. Um, you know, and then I was like, you know what, I am going to order some and just not even, I, this is terrible once again of me to admit, but I'm going to try them on one of my pickiest clients and I'm going to see if she notices anything <laughs> different today. Cause if she does, she'll come in and then I'll get her in, you know, a few days later and I'll fix it. No big deal, but let's just test it. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Right. She comes in, I'm all sweaty. I'm just kidding. Um, she comes <laughs> in and I, you know, do the set. She leaves. I don't hear a thing. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know, you know, maybe she knows this, but maybe she's not saying anything. And she comes back in the next time. She's like, oh my gosh, you were like 20 minutes faster. I love them. Like whatever you did last time. And the retention was the same. And, you know, that's just like what we talked about at the beginning. That's when your, your brain kind of is like, oh, well, if it's saving me 20 minutes and she didn't notice, <laughs> Yeah, so exactly right. That's, like, yeah, chance and just like don't discard it. And if you're like totally against it, 
aren't feeling it, feel like, no, this is wrong, I would recommend buying do a model set just for practice on a friend or a family or someone that like you trust that lets you practice and check it out for yourself. And then I feel like you'll really just uh, be able to judge for yourself truly, like, you know, with, uh, with your work there. Yeah, I totally agree that just, I mean, whether it's someone that you just do a full set on or a client that you do a fill on just to give them a shot. Cause immediately I started doing what some of the girls at my salon were doing. We started mixing them in and then my wrist stopped hurting and a few things. And I'm like, I need to add these to, uh, the R line. Yeah. And because now I do a test for them because that's kind of what we're about is, you know, we don't, sell things that we don't personally use. So I started using it and I was like, okay, I am officially sold. But what really did this, what really sold me, Jay, is these last six months, I have been so sick with morning sickness and the fans have saved my life. Oh, thank goodness. (laughs) Because you're so much quicker, like you said. Um, And so I just have to like, give these fans some serious props. That's why I wanted to have you on. Yes, I am seven months pregnant. So add to the bag of pain. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I wouldn't live without these. Everything. You're going to swell up, all that (laughs) stuff. Yeah. I definitely see what sold you is definitely the last six months. (laughs) So if you're listening and you are pregnant, save your <laughs> life and switch to these. <laughs> no joke. Goodness. Yes. <laughs> yes. So they have definitely saved me because I get to do people faster and I was booking them my regular fills time. So I got an extra 30 minutes to go, whether it was throw up or stuff my face <laughs> <laughs> and then back to an hour fill. How awesome is that? For sure. For sure. Yeah, no, they can be very life-saving for sure. So, yeah, I just think, you know, people out there, I just hope today we brought down some walls with that because I think people should just give them a shot in one way or another, Mm -hmm. or, you know, like you said, go make a pro made, you know, and then go, you know, take out one of these fans and see the difference. Yeah, exactly. Like you can, you can just, compare the two and like maybe a few years back um maybe even five or more years back they're not pre-mates and and pro-mates were not what they are now they really are they've completely evolved and so and I feel like even in the next year or two they're going to continue to evolve because they're always looking to make the one that looks just like a perfect perfectly made handmade um lash fan right and so yeah. they're competing for who can make the the best handmade looking pre-made right and so they're always going to continue to evolve and look better than the last yes and I will say that was another thing let's just talk about all the things that sold us right um yeah. <laughs> is I was messaging manufacturers and they I was like well let's see how they're made And they sent me videos of people making these fans by hand and crystallizing. That's how loose fans are made. Isn't that wild? They're, they're doing it for us. We just have, we had no idea. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I've seen this too. I've seen all the different ways that they can make a pre-made and, and then you can really just tell the different quality too. So if someone was to come to, you know, you or me and say, okay, well, how do I look or what are all these terminologies? Like help me guide, you know, which fans to pick or which loose fans or what, you know, there's so much language out there. So what would you tell them to look for in a loose fan or like, how would they know they're made by hand? Okay. So, well, okay. How would they know they're made by hand? Honestly, I feel like there's times where that can be a little hard to tell, but yes. for the most part, if they are in a loose container, in a container where they're loose, that will usually, usually you can count on that being handmade for sure. Mm-hmm. 
Now you open it and you start looking at it and you can tell just from knowing lashes and doing lashes usually, you can tell if that's a good quality or a bad quality because of the adhesive that was used on it. You know, you can totally. even see like, did they overuse the adhesive? Is it too much adhesive? Or did that, does that lash look all over the plate? The lash fan look all over the place or does it look well put together? They're not going to be all exactly symmetrical when they're handmade, no matter what, no matter how great the art is. Like they're going to be very similar, but you, there's, I feel like it's pretty much impossible to get every single one to look like um, exactly the same, like a clone of the other, you know? Yeah. And going back to like, that's why I think your client might not recognize that, you know, you weren't doing them is because it has human error in it. Right. Like They're not all perfect. Right. They're not, all, they're not all perfect. Exactly. Human definitely did it for sure. Yeah. But there's also some great pro mates that are machine made, but a uh, human assisted, if that makes sense. Like someone is there assisting the machine. It's not 100% just the machine, if that makes sense at all. And those are also, those can be very, um, comparable to a handmade as well and the only reason I would debate that um like I would look at it and say that okay I can tell a difference from this and that is because they'll definitely come out perfectly symmetrical to you know its neighboring lashes and they'll usually be on a strip of some sort that you could easily pick up totally I remember watching that video from a manufacturer send that in um, to me and it was a laser they were using. So it looked like a classic lash and then they were taking a laser and just cutting out the fan. And I don't know, maybe you've seen a different video. Um, that's what I've seen with those. And I was amazed by something. I mean, can you imagine how small that needle is to literally (laughs) cut out an 8D fan? I know. (laughs) No, it's insane. Technology's got very far. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that's cool where, you know, maybe they're more sensitive. Like I have a client that's very sensitive and I actually use those fans on them because there was no pre-existing glue. Mm -hmm. Um, So I like to use that on them versus... I love the loose fans, but there's glue on them before. And I just am cautious of what sensitivities they have. Yeah. You know, you bring up a great, great point. Clients that I have that have been sensitive or come as like, say a new client comes in and they say, I've had sensitivities before, you know, with, with lashes. And I just want to give it one last try, whatever it is. Right. Yes. I always end up keeping those clients with pre-made or pro-made eyelash extensions because there is no pre-glue existing there, right? And yes, because you have the ability to be able to do more without having to even touch the fan or, you know, there's also the pinching Mm -hmm. method. There's all all these other methods and then you pick the right adhesive and it's like, it's totally fine. The fumes may be there just a tad bit right after because they're more sensitive. They might feel it a little bit more with whatever adhesive. But at the end of the day, they, they're completely fine. Like they never complain and they come back and, and they love it. And it's almost like you found a solution, you know? Totally. And I would just tell the, any lash artists listening. So those are the loose fans out there and that we were talking about in the beginning that, you know, are handmade. And then what me and Jay were just talking about, you can find those on a strip. Usually those are the ones made by a laser. Um, I mean, some people call them ultra thin pre-made fans or anything that has, you know, a thin base is usually what those are made of. Um, And to try those out as well. Um, They are a little bit more expensive. I've noticed. I don't know about you on your end. Oh my gosh. So they were very similar to the same, like you could buy a tray of um, volume lashes to make them yourself um, Mm -hmm. for like, say what, like 20 bucks, maybe two, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and now, and, and the, and the pre-mates were about 20 to 25 for like an XL. Yeah. <laughs> and now, and now like they're 40 to 50, like as soon as COVID hit, I noticed every few months, it just kept going up in price and I kept uh-huh. to change my pricing because it was starting to not make sense with my clients. Right. And that's yeah. my business. And I've gotten to the point where I need to bring my prices up again. Yeah, and it hasn't even like in the past year, I brought it up twice. So this would be the third time without actually achieving a full year. And now I'm like, I just, 
you know, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do, you know, you know, uh-huh. you, you got to do what you got to do, but it doesn't mean that we're excited to be like, Hey, I'm going to bring up a pregnancy. You're not necessarily <laughs> or you're just trying to make the same amount as before, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. That's kind of why I tend to use more of the loose fans um, mm-hmm. that come in, you know, the tray where they're all loose versus these, um, unless they're sensitive just for the cost difference, because I charge my sensitive clients more money because it does cost significantly more than a, a loose tray that has 500 fans Right. for, I mean, and tell me, I mean, I'm off the top of my head, like $25 versus the other ones that, you know, like you said, I mean, I think they're like $68 right now. Yeah. It depends on where you look companies and yeah. not, but yeah, uh, it can definitely be, um, yeah, I think the most I've seen right now is about seventy ish dollars for a tray yeah. of an XL double side. But yeah, that's I mean, goodness, it's getting out of control in my opinion. Like holy crap. <laughs> so yeah, no yeah. loose fans are definitely a better option if you're looking to save more money. Um uh-huh. but I, I personally do prefer the ones on a strip because it's easier and quicker to pick up, right? And you, yes. You can just kind of like line them up a lot easier in your own kind of tray with the different sizes than having to pick out each individual size, depending on, you know, yeah, it's easier that way. No, I totally. And I think once again, it's all preference because I, I like the loose. Now I just had a rhythm of how I pick them and I can grab them. And, um, but I know, like you said, and then I have a few girls that love the ultra speed that are on a strip, but they're not like the sticky strip. Have you, have you seen those? I, I've seen them. And I honestly, that's like the one I've yet to try because oh, I've yeah. seen that like, it's basically, you can make a say 60 fan. It's already like separated as a 60, right? So, so are those the ones you're talking about? And then you just make the fan. Oh, I've seen those. I mean, there's so many things out there. <laughs> this one, um, it comes on a clear strip and the fans are already made. Um, but they're not, they all kind of come in a bundle and they're, they're called ultra speed, um, ultra speed fans. So there's so many terms out there and the, and another company could call it something completely different, but that's what I know from yes. just market. And, um, so they come in like a bundle, but you pull out the strip and then you put it on your double sided sticky and you line it up on there because they don't come sticky. And then it's still on a strip mm-hmm. and they can peel it off from there and take it. And I have people that love that because they feel like it's in between the loose fans, but they're not as expensive as the ones that we were talking about earlier right. uh, that come in that cart. Yeah, I know which ones you're talking about. I've yet to try those. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I, I've tried them. I like them, um, but I, I would say loose for me. And then like you said, yours. So, but it's so fun, right? Because I see, you know, someone else trying those. And right. I think it's so cool that there's so many options now sure. and they're all such slim bases. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. There's so many options. That's why I just feel like, and you know what? I think you also need to try different techniques and different options just if, to continuously grow as a lash artist, even if that's not something you're going to do or stick to or whatever, you know, if you're continuously growing, then you're getting to a point where you at least want to keep an open mind of everything that's out there and everything that's available. Yeah. So the last one I want to talk about is the ones not to buy just because I want to help everyone out. And so I know you have experience with what not to buy. I have what advice, like when they go and on Amazon, you know what I mean? Like they just have no idea where to go. Like (laughs) what should they zoom in? Like what, what advice would you give someone? I mean, obviously not even Amazon, don't go there, but let's not even, they don't know. So what would you tell right. them? No. And right out of school, like I totally went to Amazon because <laughs> I didn't know where to, I didn't know there was actual companies that were making them, you know? So yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go give this a try. And as soon as I got them, I was like, this looks like a big no for me. Like, no, I didn't even try them. I went and I was like, what is this? 
So, <laughs> and when I was also doing my research to do my own company, I remember ordering more from Amazon because I wanted to compare the different kinds and types because there's these Facebook group pages that I'm in and you'll go in there and then people will say, what are the best like premium fans? And then people will recommend certain things from Amazon. So I'm totally like, okay, maybe I just tried the wrong one when I, like I bought the wrong ones when I first got out of school. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of like in that moment saw all the different ranges of, of lashes of pro made, pre-made from Amazon to a really expensive type. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What I have noticed um, is that usually the better quality ones may mm-hmm. possibly come apart a lot easier than um, those that are not the best quality that are very comparable to say a cluster. I, I love that? that. I totally like, agree because yeah. of the glue, right? I mean, just how right. much is on it. Right. And think about it when you make a handmade fan, it's going to come like, it's going to come apart a lot um, faster, easier than say a pre-made that was made by a machine. I don't know if you've ever compared the two or looked at it enough to see that. And yeah. so um, when you're looking at pre or pro made and that, and like, I've seen people complain um, on those Facebook pages about like, Oh, they just come apart so easily. Don't buy these. And it's like, well, that's usually a sign, <laughs> like, <laughs> a sign of better quality, not necessarily, yes. you know, doesn't mean you have the best, but definitely better quality. So if you've got, so if you're trying to look out for what not to get, if that handmade uh, you know, quote unquote, handmade loose or on a strip mm-hmm. already fan um, is not coming apart easily. That can technically be a sign that it is bad quality. I don't want to say all of them because I haven't seen all the ones in the world, right? Yeah, <laughs> but me my either. Experience <laughs> in my research, that's what I have noticed can be a red flag. Uh, yes. And the other thing, so yes, number one, that I'd say number two, or I, maybe they tie for me is the bases. Like I'm just so weird about, I hate like what, like when the fan opens up too soon. Yeah. And maybe that's just me as a lash artist, but I feel like I get more stickies and everything like that when it's just like fat base right away. And it's like too much, um, too soon. (laughs) Uh, The bases when they are pre or pro made can sometimes be a seem thicker than one that is like say handmade depending on I guess how you make your handmaids right we're always yes. trying to get that thin base right okay. and so if they're like squared really boxy and squared I, that can always always be a sign to just watch out and be careful <laughs> agreed um oh. yes I would try to watch out for that and also I don't know if I made it clear enough don't buy anything from Amazon <laughs> <laughs> yes and I guess if you're lashing and you start noticing you're getting more stickies, maybe check the bases and make sure they are at a thin base. Cause that could be one of the issues because I, I don't know how many times when I was trying to find, you know, a good quality manufacturer, um, I noticed the bases and, or I even thought they were thin enough. And then as I was going, cause you work faster, right. they start becoming neighbors and you're like, Oh, like that's not thin enough, even though I thought it was, but you need it to look like a hand made. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that can definitely be a sign if they're too bulky in the bottom for sure. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to mention to someone that has never, you know, tried like pre-made, pro maids, anything yeah. like that, or anything you feel like? you know, we didn't hit on because I just hope that today someone out there is just going to go and do some research wherever company they decide and just Mm -hmm. try it. Um, that would be, that would be my goal today. Right. No. So yeah, there is one thing I would love to mention. Um, I think this can come up often with people when they are first, when, you know, trying to open up to the idea of possibly using pre or pro made fans, loose fans, however you want to call them. Um, one thing that I've noticed and I've heard as, as lash artists, especially ones that will tend to be um, not as open-minded about it. One concern that comes up is, well, how can you get create? How can, how does creativity play into it? Like you need to individually make every fan to each individual natural lash because they're all different, right? Yeah. And that's something I've heard people feel like is a, is a true concern for them. 
and that can make them go well no that's a no because if you're having every lash every fan made exactly the same or similar you know what about when you reach a lash that can um that needs a little more help or there's a gap you know there's clients that will have a gap or or baby lashes in between because they're going through a cycle and you can't you can't lash those baby lashes so it can look like there's a gap like what do you do and and one thing I've done is like like I've said, where there's a will, there's a way. Maybe that's like, <laughs> life. like yeah. Because I I don't halt stop. Like I did handmade for a little bit, and there's things I learned that I'm like, well, you can do the same thing with a handmade or pre-made, um, previously made fan or whatever. And um, I I post about it, and I've done I haven't done as good as doing the carousels with like really educational, but like um, all those things have a solution. They really have a solution. The same kind of solution you would look for as a, as a, as you're doing it handmade, you can find that solution with pre or pro made. The creativity doesn't need to stop at all. Like how many, how many people are there on the internet aren't actually making their handmade, like their, their fans handmade on the spot. They're not saying it. And there's so much creativity. There's so much beauty out there and you'd never know until you get talking to them like, Whoa. And they open up about it, you know? Yes, I totally agree. Um, and what would you tell that last artist? Like, what would be your solution to like a gap? Like, what would you, what would your advice be? Yeah. So something, one of the things there, there, there's a few ways, but my favorite way that I feel like hardly ever fails me is, um, say I'm using 5d on a client, um, Mm -hmm. doing regular volume and I get across the point where I see a gap. Um, which has happened a few times, especially when they use like strip lashes a lot and they decide to switch over to extensions. They'll usually oh, have some gaps, yeah. you know, because they pull <laughs> uh-huh. um, so what I've done is I always have near me um, in my tray, I usually mm-hmm. have fans that are anywhere from 10 to uh, about 18 D because mm-hmm. there's clients that I can definitely say, because I work with like half of my clientele is Latinas, like they have really thick, Oh, the best lashes. Natural lashes. Like, yeah. Have, doing a 10D on them is like, you know, doing a classic or it's a child's play. On regular, <laughs> on anyone else. Yeah. So, um, so what I do is I will usually pick up, say I'm doing that 5D, I'll usually pick up like a 10D or two 10Ds of whatever size, say we're yeah. working with 10, the size is 10. Um, and I will face those, those, um, tendies towards each other to cover the gap, if that makes sense. So totally. where the gap is, I'm going to be turning those tendies towards that gap. And then it kind of creates a, like, almost like a ghost fan where there is nothing there. Yeah. Just like you said, just like you would do for handmade volume. Right. right. With handmade, you'd probably be like, okay, well, we need to cover this up. So you're going to pick up a little bit more than you were in the other lashes where you were hand making them. Right. And yep. make it look a little bit bigger to to cover that gap it's the exact same thing tra- same same thing I used before same thing I'm using now when I do pre or pro mates like it's the same thing you just have to like I feel like maybe sometimes people can can just like close themselves completely like there's just no way that can happen and there is there totally is <laughs> yeah and then it saves you what maybe five minutes and you can walk with a good back and and wrist <laughs> Yeah, you can have extra time for your break. Yeah, you'd think, but you know, then I just purposely like not book myself a lunch or something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Jay, it was so much fun having you today. I I just follow your work and I was so inspired by how outspoken you were because I don't see it a lot, honestly, in the industry. And so I'm just grateful that you are out there helping people that maybe are feeling a struggle and they may not, they might even change career paths completely until they find someone like you that it is okay to use a different, you know, way to lash than what is so engraved in our industry. No, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here and being able to help and spread that knowledge is like what I'm all about. I try to do it through my reels all the time. And I feel like, um, sometimes when there's like not much in each I'm like people hate me because I use pre or pro means and say it out loud <laughs> no I'm like I'm not gonna Call stop me. like people need to know it's okay because you know what more than half of the people I feel really are doing it girl call me I'll be like as I'm like 
death on my deathbed sick from being pregnant, I'll be like thanking <laughs> your praises. So no, <laughs> they can come talk to a crazy pregnant lady first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Thank you. Yeah. No, yeah. thanks for having me. Good luck with your pregnancy. <laughs> Thank you so much. And once again, um, to all of our listeners, if you want to go ahead and follow Jay, it's at J underscore Lashpreneur. So thank you so much again. And we'll be talking soon. Of course. Thank you. Have a good one.